Hi Crypto Devs, Liarco here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create and manage an S3 bucket, which is uh, object storage on the cloud with DigitalOcean Spaces. For example, this is what I use together with the SafeNFT metadata provider in order to protect collections from the snipers during Mint. Let's get into it. DigitalOcean Spaces are essentially the same as S3 storage on AWS, but much easier to use and manage. In fact, you can use all the available tools for S3 with Spaces, including clients and software libraries. I want to make it clear this video is not sponsored by DigitalOcean and I never got in touch with them directly. I'm simply using their services a lot with my company and we, as well as our clients, are very happy with the results. They also have a referral program, so if you'd like to try out their services with 100 bucks of free credit, I'll leave a link in the description for that. Spaces are also very cheap. They start at $5 a month to access the service, and that includes 250 gigabytes of storage as well as 1 terabyte of bandwidth. You can create as many buckets as you need for free and they will count towards your total used space. Once you exceed the limits, then you will pay an extra fee for storage and bandwidth. At the moment, the prices are 2 cents per gigabyte for extra storage and 1 cent per gigabyte for extra bandwidth. This is not bad at all. Let's create a space together. Before we create a brand new space, I want to explain a few things that may be helpful. First of all, a space, as well as S3 buckets in AWS, are just containers for your files. This type of service is what's called object storage, which is a bit different from a regular file system. It may seem like you have files and folders in there, but in reality, what you have is a mapping of the full file path to the respective data. This gives many advantages, including lower costs, but there are also disadvantages if you don't pay attention to how it works. For instance, the fact that folders are just faked makes it impossible to move files from one folder to another with a single action. Talking about NFT assets, if you have a typo in your assets folder and you want to rename it, that rename action will take you quite a long time depending on your internet connection. The reason why is that since each file is identified by a key, which also includes the full path, you are gonna rename the key of each single asset instead of just renaming the parent folder. The same applies to any metadata or permission you may want to set. Some clients allow you to change those on folders, but what they're actually doing under the hood is running the same command over each object key which starts with the path to that folder. You can imagine that, especially with big folders, this may take a very long time. So pay attention and be smart when uploading your files because uploading them with the correct folder structure may save you a lot of time, really. Now it's finally time to create the space. So the first thing to do is to pick a region near to you, so you can have the best speed possible when performing actions like uploading your files. Enabling the CDN, which is the Content Delivery Network, is really important if you want to give public access to your assets. That will take advantage of a huge network spread around the globe in order to serve your files from the nearest server to your end users. This option is free and you can also enable custom domains. In this case, I'm ok with the default one. You can also choose a cache time for browsers. This will tell them how much time they should cache your files for. This also depends on your use case, but most of the times, the higher, the better. File listing allows users to point to a folder and see the list of all the files in there. I never had the need to enable this, but it's good to have it as an option. Finally, you have to choose a name, it must be unique across the whole region, and we can also assign a DigitalOcean project in order to organize our resources. This is all you need in order to create a new space. And once done, it will show us the space dashboard. This page has an integrated file manager which allows you to view the files on the space as well as performing some actions on them. It's very cool to have it, but the documentation clearly states that it's not meant to be used with huge amounts of data. So, I'm gonna show you an alternative solution. From here, you can also see the endpoints to be used in order to access your public files. The settings page gives access to some configuration. You can clear the CDN cache, and you can even set the cross-origin policy. 
For instance, if you need to fetch your files from a DAP, you may need to enable your custom domain here. You can add rules for any type of request and you can enter the URL of your website. Doing that would be the safest option, but you can also simply set a wildcard in order to allow read requests from any source. The endpoint here is what we need in order to connect to this space using an external client or library. So let's do it. Any external client will need an access key and a private key in order to send requests to the endpoint. So I'm gonna create a temporary key pair. Remember that, at least at the moment, it's not possible to limit access to one or more spaces depending on the key. Each key will have access to all of the available spaces on your account. Different keys are only useful if you're using multiple applications, so in case one of your keys gets stolen, you can simply remove that one and all the other applications will still work properly. Once you create a new key, you see both the access key and the private key. You should note these down in a secure place because you won't be able to see the private one anymore after you leave the page. With these two keys and the endpoint, we can now configure any client. In this case, I'm using CyberDuck. You'll find the link in the description. It's a very cool client, it's free, and it works pretty well, so I personally decided to buy the license in order to support the developers. From the Bookmarks tab, we can create a new connection. We select Amazon S3. The server here is the endpoint from DigitalOcean. Remember, this is the endpoint in the settings, not the public one from the file manager. Then we just need our access key and private key. Once done, you immediately get access to all the spaces available in your account. My company is using spaces in order to store public assets for some clients. That's why you see multiple entries here, but you will see just the one that you created. We can click on the correct space, and here we can upload any files and folders we want. For example, let's upload some collection data for the tutorial about the SafeNFT metadata provider. The typo here is intentional, so I can show you what happens if you want to rename a folder that contains some data. Now, I also create a subfolder called private, and I upload both the assets and metadata. The upload speed depends on your internet connection, but if you have a good one, it should be pretty fast. Now, let's amend the main folder name. As you can see down here, CyberDuck is cycling through all the files in order to update the folder name for each of them. Here, I have just 12 tokens, so it's okay, but with thousands of images and JSON files, it would take ages. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how to manage file permissions. The file manager on DigitalOcean makes it super easy to get the public URL of any file. Anyway, if we open this link here, we should get an access denied error. This is correct since newly uploaded files are private by default. If you can access the file, then your client might have a different default configuration. You should be able to change it from the preferences. For instance, in CyberDuck, you can change it here. Now, let's say for any reason you want to make a specific file public. I upload an example file here and I verify I cannot open it. In order to make it public, I can simply right-click on it, click on Info, move to the Permissions tab, and then on Everyone, I can set the permission to read. If you can't find the Everyone entry, you can add it from here. Now, if I refresh the page, the file is public. Of course, permissions can also be changed from the DigitalOcean's file manager. Now you know how to create and manage S3 buckets. Whenever you need to store or serve assets, this is a very powerful way to do it. Now, what would you use this solution for? 
let me know in the comments. And if you have any questions about these or any other topic, feel free to ask. I will be more than happy to answer and maybe pick some suggestions for future videos. For now, thank you for watching and bye.